hear any background noise, these guys are the reasons why. Today I'll be talking about all the materials that I use to create my colored pencil portraits. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the kind of paper that I like to use. And every artist is going to have their own preference. Some people use pastel matte, some people use Bristol Smooth, but for me, I prefer to use Bristol Vellum. Now the nice thing about this paper is that you can buy it in the pads, which are two ply, or you can buy open stock sheets, which are four ply. The four ply are a lot thicker, as you can see between the horse and the cat. The cat was done on the four ply paper and the horse was done on the two ply paper. I prefer to use the four ply just because I sell a lot of my artwork and I want my clients to feel like they're getting something of quality when they hold it in their hands. Plus I just feel like it can take a lot more layers than say a flimsy two ply paper. So the next material I'm going to talk about is my colored pencils. And I use several different brands. I use the Caran d'Ache Luminance, the Derwent Lightfast, the Faber-Castell Polychromos, and the Derwent Drawing Pencils. Now all of these have different properties and different things about them that I like, which is why I use them together rather than just using one brand all the time. And for the most part, all of these brands are super light fast and archival, which is good if you're selling your work because you want the artwork to last over time. Now for the Derwent Light Fast and the Derwent Drawing and the Caran d'Ache Luminance, those are all going to be wax-based pencils. And these ones I'd like to use on top of layers that I've already done with my polychromos. So the polychromos are oil-based pencils, and those ones are really great because you can use them with odorless mineral spirits and create almost like a wash similar to how you would with watercolor. And this is how I get my initial base of color and values down whenever I start a piece. I'll have tutorials coming soon on what my process on using those looks like. So the color pencils are going to be similar to the paper in the fact that the better quality pencils that you use, the better the outcome of your artwork. So if you're someone that has used color pencils in the past and you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't get the results that I'm wanting, it might be because you're using not great pencils. So the next thing that I like to use in all my drawings and kind of have to use are my sharpeners. The one that I'm using most currently is my Derwent Super Point Manual Sharpener. And this one has a crank handle, it's very old fashioned if you will. It does also have little teeth that hold the pencil in place and it has a little catch for all of the shavings as well. But this one is my favorite, it gets the pencil sharp every single time. And it's my old trusty sharpener. Now the next one I don't use nearly as much and you'll see why because the point keeps breaking every time I sharpen it. But it is the little Stabler hand sharpener and this you can get at Michael's for like, ooh, I don't know, seven bucks maybe. But it's good if you're just like, you know, going to and from classes or wherever and you need to bring your pencils on the go. It's easy, it's portable, and it gets the job done. But you can just see how it keeps snapping my pencil every single time I put it in the smaller hole. Now the next couple materials are things that I use to remove material from the paper when I'm working to create details. And this is going to be my erasers and my ceramic knife cutters. So the first one is going to be my dormant electric eraser and that's exactly how it sounds. It is an electric eraser. It rotates really fast. So if you're trying to remove a lot of pigment, this is a good way to do that. Now the next one is going to be my mono zero eraser. This one is really thin and you can actually shape it using a craft knife. So if you need to get a little tiny point, you can do that by cutting the eraser down. It's also similar to a mechanical pencil in the sense that you click the end of it to get more eraser out. And both of these are also refillable as well. So the next one is gonna be this little green looking thing. And it's a precision cutter from Slice. This one is a ceramic blade and it's very tiny. This one I primarily use for smaller portraits that are like five by seven. If I'm trying to like lift up details on a really tiny surface, I'm going to need a really tiny knife. So that's what this one is for. 
Now the other one is almost like the exact same. It's the slice hand cutter and this one has a bigger ceramic blade on it and I use this for my bigger artworks. Both of these ceramic cutters are super nice for lifting up the wax off of your paper to create like little detailed hairs and you can also kind of imprint into the paper so if you're doing whiskers but I pretty much use them in every single portrait that I do and they're super good tools to have. The next thing that I like to use in my drawings are going to be paintbrushes. And you're probably thinking, okay, it's a drawing, why are you using paintbrushes? Well, I actually use them to blend out my color pencils with odorless paint thinner. Sometimes also called OMS, which stands for odorless mineral spirits, but it's all the same thing. Now I don't use super high-end, really fancy, expensive brushes in my drawings. Just because I don't really need to, all I'm doing is blending out the colored pencil. So I usually use cheap brushes that I get off of Amazon. It's just more important that you have a good variety of sizes. A brush for each area that you work in. So if you're doing something small like the eye, you want to have a smaller brush. And if you're doing something larger like the background, you want to have a larger brush. I like to use the Odorless Terpenoid by Weber. I think I'm saying that right. But I get it in these big quartz, and it's also because I do oil painting as well, and so it just works better for my budget to just get it in bulk. But you can get this in a lot smaller quantity. I know if you go to Michael's, they have the Mona Lisa odorless paint thinners, and those ones for sure come in a lot smaller sizes. So if you're just doing color pencil stuff and you don't need a lot of this, that might be a better option for you. This next material is something that I would use if I was doing like the whiskers on a cat or like finishing details that required like a really bright white. Previously I was using gouache to do this but I found out that that's not actually archival so I started using this brush and pencil colored pencil titanium white and basically what that is it's ground up colored pencil pigment that you can mix OMS with and it almost makes like an ink and so I'll go back to using that really tiny brush that I showed you guys earlier and that's what I'll do to make my whiskers. So this one's not really a drawing material per se, but it is something that I use quite frequently. So the Bristol Vellum 4-ply sheets I said come in 20 by 30 or 30 by 40, which is really huge and usually I don't sell work that large. So what I do is I use the Logan Mapboard Cutter to size down my artwork to smaller sizes like 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 or 16 by 20. And I use a Logan matte board cutter because the four ply is so thick that a craft knife just does not cut the paper the way I need it to. I like to have clean edges and make it look very professional when I sell my work. Plus, on the other hand, this does come with a bevel cutter as well, so if you wanted to cut custom mats on your own without having to go through a frame store, this is something else that you can use to do that. The final thing that I use for any of my colored pencil portraits is going to be the Grumbacher Matte Final Fixative. And this is just a spray that you would put over top of your work when you're done just to seal everything in and make sure nothing moves around or gets messed up after you've finished. It does however have a very strong smell so if you do plan on using this definitely do it in an area that's very well ventilated not inside in your art studio. And do make sure if you do get this for yourself that you get the matte. I don't really like my drawings to be glossy, so I always go with the matte fixative. Well, that's all I have for today. So tune in next week and I will share all of the supplies that I use for my oil paintings. And until then, subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of my materials that I use. We're gonna go play outside. Say bye!